Hello and welcome to another fantastic bit rep brought to you by the Best in Tabletop Network. Uh, my name is Tyler. And it's Lucas. What's up? And uh, we are uh, hosts of Best in Faction, the next generation, BiffPod TNG, if you will. And we are bringing to you hot and fresh a game that we have just played of uh, Gene Sarah Colts for myself. And um, I'm playing the Orcs. Heck yeah, baby. All right. Um, we got a list in the description, but we'll run over them real quick. What do you got for the Orcs, Lucas? Um, kind of a return to form, going back to the Goths. Been on Chaos Knights for a while, um, but decided that with all the recent Orc success, I kind of wanted to... Give the green boys another shot. So uh, this is a um, it's a non-gas uh, golf list. It's got three kill rigs, um, thirty beast nagas inside, thirty commandos, three squads of I think it's three squads of three pigs, twenty Gretchen. They're all obsec, and then uh, got a weird boy in there, got a bike boss in there, and then my warlord is a squig boss with the feel no pain and the golf trait for plus one AP and attack. Did you mention the thirty mandos? I did, yeah. Yeah, 30 minutes. Awesome. Very cool. So, and then some Storm Boys as well. So a oh, whole yeah. bunch of Orcs, a um, whole bunch of Advance and Charge running right at you and uh, trying to trying to bash people off them primary points. The million dollar question though, Lucas. Why no gas? Why no gas? Uh, in a world where people are checking to deal with Abaddon, it turns out a guy who's just worse than Abaddon for the same points is pretty bad. Um, he's also just dramatic overkill in a, in a wide variety of scenarios. Um, so, yeah. He also adds to the move blocking problem of this army, which it definitely already has quite a bit of. Mm -hmm. um, I'd love to play him. I have a ton of fun every time I play Gaz, but he is not amazing right now. Gotcha. And then what about you? You're playing some uh, custom cult, are you not? Yeah, we're playing Mono GSC. Uh, this list is uh, almost point for point the same as what Eric Lathuris took to um, uh, WTC this year. Uh, the dude's genius, so uh, I'll innovate once I figure out how to play it in the first place. The list is built around these 30 bikes that you can see on screen with uh, flamers, excuse me, and two demo charges a piece. We then got three of the rock grinder inter tanks and then uh, two squads of 20 neophytes, um, a squad of eight acolytes with flamers and perfect ambush, three squads of five acolytes regular, and then uh, the kind of the usual slew of characters. You got your icon ward to bring guys back, the primus to give rerolls, and then the two assassins, the calamorph and the sanctus. Uh, as well as the Nexos, who really uh, makes the whole thing churn. Um, uh, yeah, it's a custom cult, so it's got uh, ignore hit mods with industrial weapons, which is a really big deal. And then it's also got baby transhuman, six up feeling of pain on the bikes and on the uh, trucks. And last but not least, sixes to wound are an additional AP and melee. Oh, and 10 pure strain stealers with a uh, uh, pregame move. I always forget about those guys. Yeah, so it's a it's a lot of fun. Um, it does a lot of killing and it does a lot of scoring. So uh, we'll see how it goes. We are uh, trying out oh, today on um, on a WTC table, trying to mix it up a little bit. I know there's been a lot of player place going around lately, so wanted to try something new. And we are playing on mission thirteen, data scry salvage. What do you think about a data scry? And what do you think about a secondary today, Lucas? Uh, yeah, data scry is an interesting one. Um, it's definitely going to favor, I would say, the player who goes first just in terms of controlling those no man's land objectives. Um, whoever gets to kind of set the tempo of the game is going to have a good lock on those. Um, so I think we're both definitely hoping to go first here. Absolutely. And then for secondaries, um, <clears throat> Tyler gives up a boatload of no prisoners points, so that's a shoe in um, The biggest and the best, this is an orc-specific secondary, which basically amounts to do cool stuff with your warlord on no man's land objectives. <laughs> Um, I figure my one beast boss is going to be like the least of Tyler's concerns. He's going to be dealing with all the stuff that I throw in his face. So if my guy is tromping around by, uh, a little bit behind the front line, getting a bunch of points, there's not much Tyler can do about that unless he wants to dramatically overextend. Uh, and then psychic interrogation as well. Um, Tyler has a lot of characters. Uh, they're all middling leadership and he has no psychic interaction. So if I get that off three or four times, I'll be a happy man. What Makes sense to me. Yeah. Uh, the GSC have what I think is a really, really good uh, hold on secondaries. Um, we've got the GSC specific secondary Brood Swarm, which is kind of a fun one. Um, basically, it scores points for outnumbering my opponent. I get a point if I outnumber them in my DZ. I get a point if I outnumber them in No Man's Land. I get a point if I outnumber them in his deployment zone. And I get a point if I outnumber them on the table in total. And if I get all four of those, I get one free. So a maximum of five points a turn. Um, which is a ton, and on those crucial drop turns, it's usually 5-5, five, five, and then, you know, you can usually scrap together the other five across the other turns. So it's a, it's a real solid secondary. 
RND, good old fashioned uh, retrieving Nephilim data. Uh, GSC are fantastic at that and you don't have either an Auspex or a 12 inch or anything like that. So yep. I feel very comfy snatching that pretty comfortably. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I've got Assassinate because Lucas has a pile of characters, each the rigs. I mean, the rigs are better die. If the rigs don't die, I'm kind of in a bad yep. shape this game. Sure. So that would be nine points right off the hop. And then he's got a bike boss and a weird boy and a squig boss. Um, if I kill one of those, I'll be at 12. If I kill two of them, it's 15. Feels like a pretty safe take to me. Yep. So I'm feeling solid about that. I think this mission is also really interesting for us here because we're both kind of armies that are kind of willing to spread out a little bit. Mm -hmm. We'll see how that shakes out. Uh, and we'll be fighting all over the table. So let's get it started. And as Lucas said, I think we both really want to go first. And it uh, turns out, oh, sorry. Lucas is going to go first. We start with deployment. Yeah. What do you got going on over here? So I just wanted to, it, more more so than actually caring what units are going in which part of the board, I just want to spread out and present a wide front so that I don't move block myself on turn one, uh, getting in my own way because orcs are notorious for doing that. Mm -hmm. um, so kind of put some Gretchen over here on the right flank to run up and try to get, grab that objective and just generally spreading the field. Uh, I think three kill rigs running down the middle um, each down one of those little alleyways through the middle of the board here, here, and here is going to be my approach. And that way, um, even if Tyler kind of moves, move blocks me with bikers, I can, if the rig survives, charge him with the rig. And then the boys that are inside will get to uh, charge on in their overwatch free. So as long as I'm taking up space and presenting a lot of threat, I'm, I'm happy. What about you? Makes sense Thoughts to me. on deployment? Do you want to mention your uh, your forward deployers real quick as well? Oh, yeah. So I got a squad of commandos back here, another squad back here, and then one squad here in the... Uh, it's a windowless L right there. Or I think that one actually does have windows um, on the WTC board. Yeah. Um, but either way, uh, they're all hiding back there. The idea being that they are... Um, they're not the fastest unit in the world, commandos, but uh, if Tyler wants to come forward and flush him out, he's going to have to move all the way up. And then that's a trade of bikers for commandos rather than free damage for him. And if he wants to trade 10 for 10, then I'm totally fine with that. Makes sense to me. Uh, my deployment is uh, GSC, so uh, it's basically nothing. <laughs> the uh, We got blips on the table. We got redeploys for blips. We got pregame moves for bikes. So it's, it's a very forgiving situation. I think I've actually... I think I've already pregame moved. Mm -hmm. Yeah, all right. So I started with the bikes just a little bit further up, basically on the line. Um, and they're ready to go very hard, very fast if I go first. Uh, the bikes have this very nice thing where they pregame move nine, they move 14, so that's 23. And then they could advance and shoot with, not the demo charges, but with most things. So positioned so that they can be aggressive if they need to, or if they get the chance. I end up going second, so they pregame move backwards. Everyone else is in a blipper off the table. Uh, you'll notice I got some blips pretty far up. And these are to make sure that Lucas doesn't try to get sneaky with his commandos there. Uh, if he does go first and call the Wah turn one and 30 commandos run into my lines, that would be game over on the spot, basically. Um, and those blips have that fantastic no moving with a nine rule. So that's just not on the table for him. Mm -hmm. Cool. So Lucas gets to go first. And let's uh, talk about your first movement phase. Yeah. So unfortunately, not a lot of interesting movement here. I'm just trying to... Um... When, when you're taking a positioning oriented movement phase where you're just moving your guys forward, you have to, uh, not a lot going to be going on here, but you do have to think about where you guys are going to be next turn. Um, because that's obviously the turn where I want to uh, do all the damage to Tyler. So I am just positioning myself so that hopefully I won't be move blocking myself uh, that too badly next turn. Uh, and that, like I described, is basically a rig down each one of those corridors and then infantry out to the flanks because, uh, so, you know, so they don't get in the way next turn. Um, I'm also going to be putting my beast boss moving on up. He's going to grab two points for sitting on that uh, this objective right here. There he goes, the lad. Um, and he's, uh, yeah, he's looking pretty happy right there. I don't want to play too aggressively with him. Uh, I have... <laughs> Played a couple games in early in my orc career where I threw him, or with the new codex rather, where I threw him away. And um, fun fact, orcs can't actually call the wog if their warlord is dead. So uh, getting that guy positioned too aggressively would definitely be a mistake. Uh, and I'm glad he's kind of tucked in safely behind that kill rig there. Yeah, no wog and hold you to a two on the biggest and the best. That would be That would be not be real ideal. Awesome. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. But uh, as we can see, um, being fairly aggressive here, it's a nice little um, dichotomy, a nice balance between trying to stay out of Tyler's threat range. Um, the demo charges in particular can do a lot of damage to kill rigs. 
Um, so trying to stay out of range of most, if not all of those, but also wanting to move forward for psychic interrogation. As we're going to see here in a second, I realized his blips were a little bit further back than I thought they were. And I had plenty of movement, so I'm just going to scoot up and get in psychic interrogation range. It is going to mean I'll get demo charge next turn, but um, I think it's a worthwhile trade-off. And then other than that, just uh, still got my commandos and a squad of piggies over here. So um, nice unit out to the flank. And then, uh, yeah, that's my that's my turn one. It's basically a ton of positioning. Unfortunately, my uh, my my risky scooch forward to grab psychic interrogation resulted in a roll of a three and then a command point into a three. So command point in the, in the hole and uh, no three points on turn one, which is a bit of a bummer. But uh, I will grab my three points on the tertiary. Mm -hmm. um, the data scry salvage tertiary is nice and, uh, and nice and efficient for aggressive armies like orcs. Um, so grabbing three points, thanks to those Gretchen in my backfield. Two on the biggest and the best. And uh, I think we're, we're good to head to Tyler's turn one, since I am essentially doing nothing. I had a couple of shots, um, but against GSC, you really don't want to be chipping models because they get to bring them back with the Acolyte Icon Ward. Don't give them any extra movement. Don't give them extra shenanigans. Um, if you're not going to be wiping out a unit or doing a lot of damage to it, don't bother shooting it. Yeah. This is actually the end of Lucas's first movement phase right now on screen. Uh, you can see my um, my gene stealers over there uh, just, just trying to plan out what's going on, where guys got to be. Uh, the blips are really nice because they make it very safe, but when all your stuff shows up, then you have to be real particular to make sure, you know, I really didn't want this guy sh shooting at this truck. Um, and I also later realized that um, I had the blip over here and the blip over there. This blip ends up turning into the truck and then this blip turns into the Steelers who then pregame move this way to go stand next to and in front of the truck. So they'll have an automatic charge going up into those commandos next turn, but are currently outside of 12. So they're not at risk of getting hurt themselves. And this terrain here is blocking off um, line of sight from getting shot at. GSC just absolutely incredibly flexible and forgiving in, uh, in deployment. Um, which uh, makes them uh, not terrible to, to learn how to play. If GSC had to, had a very static deployment, I think this army would be incredibly hard. It's, it's There's already a whole lot to juggle, so adding that would uh, would only make it a little bit messier. Yep. Uh, cool, yeah, so we're just gonna, we're gonna double check all these things 13 or 14 times, uh, make sure everything's pre-measured right. This is always is the um, the best way to play Warhammer in in our opinion. Um, have all your measurements done on your opponent's turn. Not even like, you're gonna move to here, cool. Now you're within range of this, cool. We're all on the same page here. No one, one's getting gotcha We're making, making sure that uh, every decision is being made with as good of information as is available. Mm -hmm. uh... I think this is me failing my psychic interrogation <laughs> second attempt, which... Uh momentary tilt but we, we we got past it it's very sad i think you'll recover I think I um but yeah so i think that is gonna move us looking looking towards a gsc bottom of turn one what uh what are your priorities to kill this turn like i've obviously given you plenty of targets are you gonna pivot to the right are you gonna pivot to the left where do you what are you thinking yeah, so the, the biggest thing that I think I have to do quickly is not let you run away with the point score, right? Because there's a version of this event where I table you in like two or three turns, but you get like a 24, like a 28, 32 on primary in the process and your secondaries are real solid and I end up, end up having to scrap up through a bunch of nonsense, which I don't love. Um, so I've got to keep you from getting a 12 off the hop. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, we're gonna try to do that in a couple of interesting ways. The Steelers are definitely just gonna run up this flank here and eat some commandos for lunch. Nothing complicated about that. Um, and then after that, I've decided to sort of prioritize demecking you as much as I can. Mm -hmm. um, I, I really, really hate dudes getting out of kill rigs and running onto my objectives. It goes really poorly every time. It does. Um, so we're gonna see what we can do about the rigs there. I have three rigs to choose from. Uh, this is the one that I have the most shots on, right? This guy's shooting there, the bikes can go there, the bikes can go there, this guy can shoot there. Um, so I chose that as my number one priority rig. Mm -hmm. Also having, having the Steelers over there already is going to draw some fire. So ooh, pressuring that side even harder is gonna be nice. I also ooh, like, like reading between the, in the lines here, um, Lucas is a bunch of very aggressive dudes over here that are gonna wanna run forward and he's gonna leave these grots there. So I'm thinking that in a turn or two, I'm gonna be able to get over there really well on my deep strikes anyway, right? He's benefiting from this big L, but if I show up back here, 
don't need to worry about that. Whereas up here, the terrain is mostly positioned in such a way that is favoring me shooting at him. So mm -hmm. we'll, we'll prioritize that flank. We'll swing around later. Um, and then this objective right here is real nice because Lucas just has the two models and neither of them are obsec. Put five acolytes, I had five acolytes in the, in the truck here. I need to get an R&D off. So what you'll end up seeing is they're gonna jump out, move over to here, hold this objective out from under him with their obsec and then do an R&D. And then they'll be uh, but getting Tyler, a whole lot of value. what happens if I heroic intervene into you? Oh man, heroic interventions. My old nemesis that I can never seem to deal with. What if I told you I had a one command point stratagem that said no? That that sounds like cheating. It, probably. Most of GSC sounds like cheating it, when you do it right. It really does. <laughs> but uh, yeah. So I'm able, able to set up here for uh, for a very nice move block. In, um, in hindsight, I don't know how necessary it was to be. Oh, because I think, I think if I wanted to be outside of three and actually move block this guy at all, I would have needed to... Um, I wouldn't have been able to be in R&D range. Mm -hmm. So I had to get a little bit closer. We got to, oh, we're gonna put a CP in the tank for that, that's fine. Uh, yeah, and that move block there will be really nice because while it won't be able to stop the boys if they wanna get out, and obviously the rig will be able to charge, it means the rig isn't running straight forward and charging into the bikes behind those yeah. acolytes. And that's what Lucas wants to do here. I do not want that to happen. Yeah, I would love a kill rig to hit those bikers. Kill rigs can definitely flatline, you know, 40% of it, 50% of it, bike squad. Yeah, they, they, they kill a bunch of bikes and then I kill the rigs and then the dudes get out in my DZ. No, thank you. Yep. Uh, yeah, so we're lining up, up a bunch of shots here. Unfortunately, an acolyte move block is not viable on the left side. So you're gonna have to sacrifice some bikers here, it looks like. Yeah, absolutely. They're gonna, they're gonna have to go get involved. One of the things that I've been really struggling with with this army so far is figuring out how, when, and where, and with what to do the move blocking, mm -hmm. because the entire army is really effective at it. It's mm -hmm. just a matter of getting the right guys in the right places. Yeah. Uh, and I think I do an okay job, but not a great one, um, as you'll uh, you'll see in a sec. I think these guys should probably be trying to get all the way over to this wall here, so that no one uh, can get through no there. one can get through there. Because if the guys get out and they rush through and they like show up here and then they charge through there and then I'm in trouble. If I have those three dudes, like I turn the long base sideways and it goes, you know, base, 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 um, then like just rock solid, then you're actually stuck there. Mm -hmm. um, so that that's probably would have been a, a better situation. Uh, yeah, so I drive, I've read on up. I'm going to fire off my demo charge and uh, I'm going to give plus one damage. And the demo charge and the flamers on their own from that first squad of bikes right here. This is a huge mistake actually firing with them. They do 13 wounds to the kill rig. Mm -hmm. Just boom, down to three. Uh, and from there, I follow that up with this guy who blows it up, which is great um, because, you know, you want to kill the kill rig. Uh, but it's not necessarily the most efficient thing because now this guy actually doesn't have shots on anybody else. He's not on the terrain. He came out back to have this bead. Massive mistake on my part. Uh, he doesn't have range going down this way, so he's not shooting this turn. This squad of dudes over here, they have a demo charge. Uh, not that demo charge. They have a demo charge. They got within six of that guy. Didn't throw it because they were dead. Um, the Kilrig also then careens forward and does a little bit of damage to me, which is good. But Nick, Lucas actually forgot to do that at first. Uh, Nick had to remind that him. Exists. It's, but that's definitely, you know, the wild thing is it's only one CP on a kill rig. That's real good. Um, it's I think it's it scales with the amount of explosion damage it does because a wagon is D6 mortals, but mm -hmm. I think it's two CP to careen. But the rig is just a three inch explosion for D3. So gotcha. it can be really good to just like scoot forward at six and, and still blow up on your opponent's stuff. Very nice. Mm -hmm. All right. So you got the uh, the dudes have gotten out back here and this is now a massive problem for me. Because like I said, I've already shot with the two things that would have line of sight on them and they're obsec. And so we are not taking that objective from you yep. unless you roll absolutely abhorrent on your morale, which is not gonna happen. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing that I then do is my Sanctus is set up here. He takes a cross court shot at your weird boy. And uh, man, oh man, does a Sanctus love to shoot a weird boy. A time honored tradition. It's... Of my weird boy dies turn one to that rat <laughs> bastard. Saying this, I remember the very first day that we played uh, GSC I versus Orcs absolutely when that livid, Codex came yeah. out in Eighth Edition, Turn One because we were or Turn Turn One I did nothing. You ran forward, top of and then like oh no because the Sanctus he shoots when he arrives in the Is old this book. The plateau, yeah, at the plat, yeah. um, and he just pops up, kills the weird boy in Lucas's first movement phase. Yeah, 
and then he explodes and does tons of damage. And then the Calimorph shows up turn two, gats the war boss on the side of the head. That was not a good day for the boys. Anyway, so a little little bit of a little bit of a recreation of that. There, we did take out the um, the war- weird boy and he did do a bunch of damage to all of his buddies nearby, which was nice. Uh, as you can see here, the Steelers are going to run on in up in the top there and do their damage. But because this demo charge didn't get thrown, so we just had, I think we just had like a flamer going this way, and uh, over here um, we just had. What are these guys even shooting at? Are they just firing flamers this way? I don't even remember what they did. I think they shot into that kill rig and did like yeah. a little bit of damage. That sounds there. right. Um, but not out a ton of damage, damage from, from anywhere. Uh, this guy, I probably got shots. Oh, I think he got shots this way is what happened. Yes. Because he's touching the terrain. But basically, this squad of bikes to some extent, and definitely this guy, like just did not get to shoot. And that is not something that I can afford to do. Uh, I have a limited number of guns that are very strong and I cannot afford to not be shooting them. So that's going to be a massive mistake on my part, especially when tied in with the fact that you then got OBSEC out on the objective. Mm-hmm. Very nice. Um, Steelers go in, they eat the 10 endos. Bye. Shocker. It's 40 attacks. Um, but obviously they're now sitting ducks out there ready to get hit. Um, there was a minute where I was considering having them come out on the outside here to stay outside of six of these commandos to be able to return to the shadows afterwards. But with Lucas taking this objective back, if they return to the shadows, there'd be no one here. So I would be holding one, I would be holding two, and Lucas would be holding one, two, three. He'd get a 12, can't really afford that. So I'm gonna leave the if the Steelers here, prevent the 12 and get an extra point of tertiary yeah, as well. It's- it's five points and a CP in exchange for keeping your unit of strength four guys alive. I don't think it's worth it to yeah. return them. Especially when, in order for you to deal with them, you have to go throw those mandos into that ruin. Yes. Um, if they went and stood and just stood behind the wall where the first squad was, I don't have a great solution for that now that the Steelers yeah, are Yeah, if the, the Steelers aren't there, my, those commandos crash. turn two let's score your let's score some points for you oh you got yeah two sure. on the tertiary see so two on the tertiary i'll grab two on it. oh you got it All right. yep. and then brood swarm you got two on that yeah that's for outnumbering me in your dz and in the mid midboard not the midboard the table in general oh or no maybe it's maybe it's the midboard okay. yeah i think it's one the of those two yeah uh, and then retrieve. You are indeed uh, the lower right quadrant and assassinate. Obviously, you got a, a six on that for blowing mm-hmm. up my two dudes. <laughs> and I am getting an eight, as you described, right? Yeah. Like so. Yeah, looks good. Uh, cool. And uh, somewhat unsurprisingly, we're calling the Walgers this turn, boys. We're going in. Um, my okay. All right, relax. Uh, we're going to. Um, oh, and of particular note, I know a lot of. Um, tournaments and a lot of people playing 40k games in the competitive like guys right now are kind of confused about whether or not you can end charges inside walls with infantry the because we're playing on a wtc board and most people kind of agree that's just kind of common sense to allow people to exist inside of walls so that charges aren't impossible so like these commandos charging these dealers up here there's going to be no issues with uh, making it into combat up there yeah so unsurprisingly wog is getting called my goal this turn is to try to pick up biker squads if at all possible and at the very least put a serious hurt on all of them um this is going to be pretty tough with tyler's leftmost squad of bikes just because um like i was just saying a second ago those commandos can't go into them they need to go flush out those gene stealers um so that just means that my bike boss who is right here i believe um and those five beast nagas that are still there from the dead rig are going to have to be the ones to put some hurt on that squad. So unfortunately, that squad is probably going to knock it off scot-free, but they're going to be alive. Mm-hmm. Um, my goal is uh, between the kill ray, psychic, and shooting, and then the squad of 10 orc boys that are uh, in right in the middle right here as well. I can take out Tyler's middle squad of bikes. And then on the bottom, I'm just going to throw my storm boys and commandos into that last squad to see how well they do. That's definitely the squad I expect to do the do the worst at. Um, just because of how few attacks I have relative to, I mean, I have no characters going into that squad, so mm-hmm. I'm not expecting that to do a ton of damage. Yeah. Um, but as long as I'm kind of like pinning Tyler back, um, I want to see where his drop turn lands. I want to find out where all of his resources are going and then I can continue to allocate, you know, models appropriately. Yeah. And with, with just infantry going into this bottom squad here and my two flamers sitting up front, the overwatch potential is also definitely pretty scary for them. It's true. Um, and also, this charge is like non-trivial. I think that was like a seven or an eight. 
It was a seven to get to the tank and a six to get to the bikers. Oh, okay. That's pretty good then. Yep. Yeah. Um, here we go is a great rule. Having played an army with it and an army without it, <laughs> I definitely miss it. Um, it's not just for the added reliability, although obviously that's amazing. It's also for um, being able to go for greedier plays, especially with orcs where you have so many like 100 point units that hit super hard. For with another army, it's like, do I go for this six or seven inch charge? Like, I don't know. But if orcs, you have, you know, three or four of those 100 point units, you're like, yeah, sure, I'll go for a six re-rolling. I don't have to invest anything in the re-roll. Like, if it happens, it happens. Um, as we can see here, I'm already charging in. Um, screw the shooting in psychic phase. Those are for cowards. <laughs> and uh, You did score three on interrogation this turn. I did. That was important. <laughs> I did remember that this turn. Um, <laughs> and uh, as we're going to see here, uh, the damage is going to be pretty brutal. Also of note is the beast boss right here going after some um, acolytes. If he table flips those five guys he will get a fair number of points on biggest and the best. You want to walk us through exactly how that secondary works? Because people aren't playing orcs, and that secondary is clutch as hell in this game. In certain matchups, yes, definitely. Uh, He's going to be on that objective, and he's going to control it at the end of this turn, unless he kills zero acolytes. Um, So that's two points. Uh, For killing a unit, you get two points. And for killing five or more models, you get two points. And then dealing damage to a vehicle, monster, or character, regardless of whether or not it survives, is another two points. So he's, and it maxes at five. So he's going to get five this turn for killing that squad and standing on that objective. Um, uh, let's see. Yeah, we are, uh, I think the bike, that was the bike boss just consolidating right there. He's getting close to those gene stealers that are still left. Um, he ma- I think he managed to kill like three or four bikers and then the boys that are there killed another one or two. So that squad is hurting pretty good. They're going to, certainly going to have to take a morale check um, in the mid. We also have the kill rig and those uh, these beast snaggers that have yet to charge in. I kind of uh, forgot to charge there. Tyler, let me go back and and uh, charge him in. They're gonna go on into Tyler's home field objective, um, batter those bikes pretty good, and uh, and flip that. Tyler has uh, has a lot of obsec, but a lot of it's in deep strike. So oh, it's in deep strike. Basically, all of, I think just those five, just five acolytes, the five acolytes are, acolytes are the only objective, thing yeah. that are um, obsec. So I I put one orc on there, and that objective is mine. Um, so that's going to be pretty good. Uh, and yeah, just generally playing pressure, looking, hoping to scoop up most of the bikes this turn. Yeah. Comment Um, real quick up top. Uh, you you all may have seen it a second ago. Those Mandos ran in, punched the crap out of the Steelers. They all, I think like all but one of them died. And then the piggies finished off the last one and came in and tagged this tank. Mm -hmm. Uh, the tanks do put out pretty hard in melee, but, uh, if, if those pigs can manage to, to hold on while, while fighting it, Keeping him in combat is going to be a real big deal because they are not what he wants to shoot at right now. Yep. Certainly not with all his guns. And man, oh man, do I not want to risk uh, trying to, to fire out. I can't even fire the demolition charges anyway, even if I had someone inside because mm-hmm. uh, they're blast. Yeah. Uh, looks like we got some more. I think this is punching. probably my beast boss killing your... Um... Oh no, this mm. is my middle squad now charging in. Yeah. So yeah, it's a whole, it's a royal rumble in the middle of the table right now. Um, Tyler, yep, is losing some bikers here. I think what ends up happening with these two squads, we're basically done punching them, is they're down to like maybe three or four models each, mm-hmm. and they'll lose one or two more each to the uh, to various morale checks and coherency checks and stuff like that. Yep. So those two squads are going to survive, and they're both near the banner. Uh, for those unfamiliar with the Acolyte Icon Ward, could you uh, fill them in on how that guy works? Yeah, for sure. So in the command phase, and I checked, by the way, this is not an aura, it's a pulse. Wow. So oh, like, like John, John was wondering if he could use the Tau Ion Strat to like make it so a bike unit can't, not an aura, it's a pulse. Yeah. Uh, at the In the command phase at some point, uh, if you're within six inches of the Icon Ward, you can summon the Colt. And summoning the Colt means you get D3 dudes back into your unit at full health. Unless, of course, you're a squad of neophytes, in which case you get D6 dudes back at full health. They only have one wound anyway. But what that means in practice is that I'm getting D3 bikers back from both of those squads. And the first bikers to come back will obviously be those wolf quads, which are four wounds each with a heavy flamer. That's a lot of wounds back. If I roll a three there, that's two wolf quads in the leader. Ten wounds come back for free. Every command phase. And it's not even like they had to lose it last turn. It's like an apothecary. They can come back any time later in the game. And this is why it's so important to try to finish off GSC squads wherever possible because otherwise they're going to keep coming back and clogging you up. Yeah, absolutely. And really it is just the two dudes with the flamers and the two dudes with demo charges that do any damage anyway. The rest of the squad is filler. So 
getting to recycle basically the whole damage of the squad every turn can be really spicy. Uh, my goal is to tag and mitigate that bottom squad and kill the other two, and somehow we ended up in the opposite scenario. Yeah, those commandos popped off. Yeah, I think the knob did nothing, and then the ram rolled two sixes and a five to hit, and got five hits, five wounds, and killed like four bikers, including a quad. Um, and then the other eight guys went in, so yeah, that whole squad died, which was really big. I was like, not expecting that to happen. Yeah, um, the bikes can be really surprisingly challenging to shift under the under the right circumstances, right? Because they're always minus one to hit. They got the baby transhuman. They got the six up, feel no pain. These things tend to add up, especially against quality attacks. But if you got quantity of attacks like an orc boy unit, they just do not care. Yeah, especially if attacks that were already wounding them on threes. Yep. So you just don't really care about the baby transhuman for it's sure. Really big. Yeah. For sure. Um, if you can make it past the hit and wound step against the cultists, uh, against the bikers and, and neophytes in general, they can definitely die really quickly. Yeah. Um, so yeah, overall a really successful turn. I obviously killed those five acolytes. Tyler expected them to die. Killed the gene stealers. I think Tyler expected those to die. Mm -hmm. Um, but I also took out 26 bikers, which was a lot of damage. Yeah. I was thinking I was going to lose 15 to 18 bikers. That was what felt comfortable. 26 is a lot. Especially. And you Especially only got one back from each of the... Yeah, so that was the bummer. If I if I get six back right here, you know, if I roll the five, you know, it's a one in nine chance. But I mean, what happened is all equally unlikely. Um, if I get six back, I'd be feeling real good. If I get four back, I'd be feeling good. Um, but getting only two back is a yikes. Yeah, you really want me getting those heavy flamers, especially because I got like 20 orcs right in your face right yeah. now. If I, have, if I have four heavy flamers right there, cleaning up this squad and this squad, not an issue. Yep. Um, but with only two heavy flamers, D6 shots is not going to get the job done. Yep. So we're going to move on into my drop turn. Let's score up some points, though, for Lucas there. Yep. Um, you're going to end up with a three mm -hmm. on the tertiary again. Uh, the biggest and the best, like we said, is going to be a full five points here. Psychic interrogation, you remember to do it this turn, so have a three. And then primary-wise, you're going to hold me to a big fat donut mm -hmm. uh, as I am on literally zero objectives. Yes, sir. The orcs classic. They call it golf pressure for a reason. So pressure, pressure, bro. Yeah, some pressure has been applied. All right, so we're gonna we're gonna try to clap back about this, and this of course is the uh, the dreaded GSE drop turn, and this right here is like is why it's such a big deal to go first in this matchup. Mm -hmm. um, because if this is all happening a turn earlier, this game is just so wildly different. Mm -hmm. um, so it'll be interesting to see if I can claw all myself back out of the situation. Lucas is everywhere, but man, oh man. Do, do, do these guys put out damage? Um, so I, I have faith in them for that. Here's the 20-man squad of neophytes that drop at three inches, which is my favorite unit in the entire game. Oh my god. Sorry, Death Leaper, you've been unseated. Uh, this unit is hilarious. They are very funny. As you can see here, they're going to drop in uh, and steal two different objectives from Lucas, or at least try to get obsec on two different objectives. I've had games happen where they can get obsec on three, uh, which is hilarious. Uh, and they're going to try to shoot some guys down. Lucas has his 10 horrible gits behind this in this wall right here. Mm -hmm. So hopefully we can take those guys out with some shotguns. No obsec over here. So that one's mine. And our goal here is, is as always, on the drop turn to put Lucas down to a zero. Mm -hmm. That would be great. Um, so that one's done. That one's work in progress. Uh, this one should not be hard. I should definitely be able to do that. Uh, this one is pretty easy, but totally forgot. We got sticky objectives. Yeah. And Lucas was definitely holding holding that objective oh, yeah, at the start of his command that's phase. Right. So this is actually not going to work out at all. Just spoiler alert. I completely forgot about that. And then up here is going to be quite a challenge. This back here, however, super weak. Um, Lucas has just got 10 grots back here. So we're going to drop him. We're going to flamer those guys. Um, but overall... Um, when you're faced with this amount of pressure, you really need to identify what the weak points are and go after them hard and make sure that they crumble. Because if I just sort of drop in right here and say, all right, the kill rigs are big and scary right in front of me and shoot everything I have and kill the two kill rigs, that's great. It doesn't do anything, mm -hmm. right? 10 dudes get out, out, out right here, all the pigs and the mandos and all the crap crashes and you continue scoring points and you run away with the game. Yeah. Um, so instead of that, I, I have to focus on your point scoring first and then see how much I can mitigate your dudes. Um, because I'm also gonna start pulling you in several directions, right? Yes. I'm gonna have guys back here, I'm gonna have guys over here, I'm gonna have guys over here, I'm gonna have guys over here. Um, and if the orcs start running out of units, while I still have, like whoever runs out of units first basically loses this game. Yes. This is what it comes down to. 
So as uh, as saucy as it would be to get to go after a lot of stuff, I kind of have to uh, kill the things that are scoring points and get some damage through, focus on the infantry, and then we'll see what we can do about some of these bigger hitters later on. Mm-hmm. Uh, this situation is really awkward and unfortunate because man, oh man, does that guy want to shoot at anything other than the dudes he's locked in combat with. Yeah. Uh, and I think you also, did you pull the commandos out of combat? Is that what happened there? Uh, when you shoot at them and I pulled them out of combat when you shot. Gotcha. Yeah. I think especially because he was one of the last things to shoot, which mm-hmm. was not very intelligent of me. My thinking there is either I'm in combat or I'm not. So if uh, I would obviously rather be out of combat because my next turn I would be able to move and charge with them. Mm-hmm. Um, if... If you punch my storm boys out and consolidate back into me, I'm getting my attacks either way. Mm-hmm. If I stay in combat, I get my attacks either way. Um, but if you don't consolidate into me, then I can go do my thing. So I may as well try to be out of combat. And if you run over my storm boys and then come tag me, sure, it is what it is. Yeah. So, uh, but I mean, did you debate falling back with that truck at all? It seems like you kind of need all guns on deck. Right exactly. Now. I need every single bullet that I can get my hands on, and that means the trucks are staying in combat and hoping for the best um yep i don't have spare bullets for that unit if i weren't in combat so yep. we'll see the unfortunate reality of the situation is that lucas has pushed so far that even dropping six inches off my acolyte my neophytes are still not on the objective and they also need to come down there because with only those two heavy flamers i just cannot trust them to get the job done mm-hmm. um so we need to add more bullets and take stuff down as quickly as possible something else that's kind of happening here um that i highly recommend you do if you're learning how to play genes through cults um set up your reserves before your movement phase right yes there's so much to think about right with how these crossfires are getting lined up there's so much to think about with all the different objective placements and whatnot it's just so much easier to put them down and then start moving stuff and then make adjustments as needed if you try to move everyone to the correct position figure out like vaguely having an idea of where things are going to go and then you set them up to drop and then it doesn't work out you're going to feel real silly and you're going to waste a lot of time trying to fix it. You should just do that in general, I feel like, when you're playing 40k. Yeah. Uh, and you have reserves. is Figure out where they're going to come in in advance mm-hmm. um, so that you can plan ahead. Definitely. Uh, I've definitely had it happen more than once where um, I have an idea in the back of my head and what my reserves are doing and I just start moving stuff because it's right in front of me. And then I move to the end of the phase and I go to drop in my, like my drill squad, for example. And oops, they don't fit. Yep. And then suddenly everything goes, goes up in flames. Yep. Um, those acolytes back here with the flamers did show up. They did roasty toast those grots. Mm-hmm. Five more acolytes showed up over here. They're just going to grab an R&D over there and force Lucas to come back. Right now, Lucas does not have anything facing backwards. Nope. Um, he's going to have a bit of trouble with that. He does have five storm boys in reserve, which yep. he can certainly dedicate to the cause. But dropping in and hoping for a nine, it's a coin flip. It's like, what, like a 42%? It's a 48%. 48% with his here we go. Um, it's a coin flip. I'm kind of definitely uh, at the point on the back foot right now to the point that I need coin flips to go my way. Mm -hmm. Um, And that feels like a pretty safe way to do that. Something also, we mentioned that this is sticky. This is not sticky. Fun fact, we learned this actually during this game. On Data Scry Salvage, only the midfield objectives are sticky. The home fields are not. So shooting his uh, offset grots off of that is going to deny him a whole bunch of points. So that works out well. Um, as for the rest of the shooting phase, this was not, oh, one of the things that went very well, this, uh, this truck totally just shot those two pigs that it was in combat with and just brah, brah, down they go, which yep. was awesome. Uh, the rest of this shooting phase is going to kind of fall apart. Yeah. Real hard. Keller drops in here thinking worm tooth rounds are great at killing pigs. They are in theory, kills two of them. I was really hoping to kill three of them. Moves back over to here. Now that he's killed a model, at least he can provide a real one Zora, which is really nice for that acolyte squad or neophyte squad mm-hmm. rather. Um, but there's still a pig uh, left alive. Um, we're going to put a bunch of shotguns into the grots here. It's the only thing that I've lined up other than if I wanted to put some seismics down there. And I think I probably should have put some seismics down there probably. because uh, as it turns out, I do not kill enough of those grots. Yeah, a little bit of low rolling. And fun fact, the Gretchen actually get the new five up inform from the or the five up inform from the new log because as far as I can tell, they are orcs models. They have the orcs keyword. Yeah. Um. So on the go turn, you know, where the opponent's hopefully going to be trying to pick on your on your weak stuff, they've got a five up inform. So. Uh, yeah huge pain in the ass to deal with and i think you only killed like three and then they rolled a one on their morale check so that objective flip unfortunately just did not work and uh that objective is still mine which is very sad yeah so lucas is still gonna hold this uh he's still gonna hold this yeah and then no one's gonna oh he's still gonna hold this 
No one's going to hold that because it'll be unoccupied. So, this will be mine, and we'll see what happens over in this situation. But I've got at least um, three, Lucas and then is one is unoccupied, so I'm going to get a 12, basically. Yeah, Lucas is locked in at a 12. Yep. Ugh. Yep. A little bit of uh, unfortunate rolling there. I'm uh, not, not, a, not even, a, I don't think it's that crazy. A misallocation. It was only like, yeah, 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 poor, poor. I mean, the seismics did go in with plus one damage and scoop three piggies. I think two from Purple Squad right here. Yeah, two from Purple Squad and, and one from Red Squad. And one in Red Squad. is nice for sure. Good yep. to get those things down. Um, especially finishing off Red Squad to get rid of that bomb squig out of here. Man, do I hate those things. Yeah, they're annoying. Um... Also, this rig, I don't think we mentioned it earlier. This rig at the end of my turn one has three wounds left on it. So when I say that I'm very annoyed that I'm not shooting with two units, that's what I'm talking about, right? Yeah. That rig going down that turn makes everything go a whole lot easier because it means that I'm just, uh, I guess there's no guys inside it, but like, man, that's one less piece of nonsense to worry about in every single phase, especially with the D3 auto hitting laser cannon shot yep. and the psychic powers. That's the other thing is like Lucas took, that's another way I could have approached this game that I didn't. Once the weird boy goes down, you just have these three giant wizards, right? Mm -hmm. If I knock those things down, your psychic interrogation is over. Mm -hmm. And if I just knock this one down, at least, having just this one guy who can try to do it, I can either try to run from him, or also uh, it just means that, I mean, that's a whole lot less psychic powers. You're not doing any offensive psychic, which would be really nice. Mm -hmm. But no such luck there. Poor allocation of fire on my part. And uh, Lucas is going to get himself a 12. I will get my full five on Brood Swarm, mm -hmm. which is nice. I'll get my uh, f second R&D, which is worth four points. Uh -huh. um, and I will not grab any assassinates uh, on turn two. Uh, and no tertiaries as I couldn't start it. Um, something we didn't mention, one orc boy ends up surviving the, uh, the onslaught in here. Yeah. But doing the math that we were talking about earlier, where Lucas is already holding one, two, three to my one, possibly two, because no one's holding this. He doesn't need it to get a 12, and he's confident that uh, he can knock me off of this subjective anyway, or honestly, he doesn't even need to, because I can hold one and still get zero, yep. so he just let that guy run away. Yep. Um, but, it was important to do the math of, yes. um, you know, who holds what objectives, and for the purpose of primary or otherwise, before you decide to do auto passes, or even before you decide for like to go for plays. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I, I was... You know, Tyler had it in his head that I had the auto CP or the auto pass for two CP, and I did. I just ended up not needing it because those Gretchen decided to be badasses. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I just let that one orc run away. It's totally fine. Yeah, it makes sense. Uh, so, that's, that's uh, that, which means that Lucas is going to get a full fatty daddy 12. Yes, As you can see, the primary disparity in this game is. Uh, it's looking brutal. It's not looking great. Um, yep. And then what do you do, Lucas? Looks like you dropped in the Storm Boys uh, right yep. up here. They're going to go for a nine. Um, when you go for, you know, squads of five Storm Boys are great for things like dropping in and or dropping in onto an objective and then also trying to go for a nine. Um, it's great to kill two birds with one stone and, uh, you know, being on an objective in case I fail the charge, but also giving myself the 50, 50 chance of making the charge is, is, is a good thing, good place to be. And as it turns out, five storm boys will molly womp to eight acolytes. Um, and yeah, the last squad, I did actually leave on my go turn, 10 boys in the unpainted rig right here. Um, this was, uh, this is something I like doing to give myself a little bit of, just a smallest bit of actually added mobility on the second turn of the log. Because um, you keep all of the offensive buffs uh, like the plus one strength and plus one attack in turn two of the WOG is it's important to be make sure that your units can actually get there. And the three inch disembark from a rig on the second turn can give you a lot of momentum to actually make a charge that you might have otherwise not been able to. It also keeps the unit safe. I knew that that unit, Tyler really didn't have the time to shoot my full health rig when I had thrown so much stuff in his face. So I just put it in a really central spot and said, yeah, I mean, like you can totally out kill this if you want to shoot all of your guns at it, but that's totally fine with me. Um, and if you don't next turn, then that's the unit's going to run out eight in Thunderdome something. So um, this game, they decided to lock down the, the two objectives in the lower right by killing those Acolytes. Um, neophytes. Neophytes, yep. Uh, between plus one to hit and then some, you know, I might use the fives explode uh, strat for Goffs. Uh, they should be able to flatline that entire squad. And uh, be snag is their obsex. So even if a couple guys stick around, it's not the end of the world. Yeah, absolutely. What's the uh, what's the beast boss trying to do over here? 
He's also trying to make a charge uh, in those same neophytes. The idea being that um, he can ho hopefully kill a fair bit of the squad and then the Beast Nagus can finish off the rest. Um, the Beast Nagus can also use one CP extra pile and consolidate in case they need to, you know, get in combat with a bunch of the neophyte models. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, I bit off a little more than I could chew and shot the Beast Nagas in and they were the most accurate orcs in the world and killed like six neophytes or something with their ten sluggas, um, which... <laughs> Made the beast boss's charge uh, impossible into the neophytes and a nine into the Kelamorph. But as we see right there, better lucky than good. I rolled the nine. I don't think I've been need needed. Here we no, go. You hard rolled an eleven or something silly. Yep. And then the uh, storm boys in the backfield uh, got the nine with. Here we go. So made both the fifty fifties. That was big. And uh, now this game is feeling pretty secure for me. Yeah. That was probably the last. Uh, little hump i needed to get over to to lock this game down i was already feeling pretty advantaged mm -hmm. mostly because of the primary disparity yeah um but at this point it's it's pretty much over yeah there's there's not a there's not a whole lot that i can do now without those couple of um of units lucas is going to score a whole bunch of points here uh nothing on the tertiary because uh, as we discussed he doesn't have anybody up there at the moment but he'll get another five points on the biggest and the best uh he actually forgot to interrogate this turn mm -hmm. Um, so no points from on that, but that's still looking real good. And he's going to hold me to another donut, as uh, Adam Camilleri says, uh, which is not what I was looking for on primary. And he's on my objective, so I'm also going to score a zero on tertiary. Yowza. Yep. Uh, and I think that's about, about as much as, uh, as we have footage of. We did end up uh, rolling out, out some of this stuff, but um, we'll just give you the, the run through on the talk real quick. It's not a whole lot of interesting stuff. Uh, we're able to kill off this rig, drop in five dudes across these two objectives in R&D, which is nice because Lucas just completely abandoned them to run the Mandos in here, which I mean, he's got to kill stuff. Makes sense to me. Mm -hmm. um, we'll get our R&D there. Uh, obviously, this big old squad of Snagas kills the whole thing here. These guys are dead. Uh, these five dudes walk onto the objective. And at the end of the day, uh, Lucas then takes the next turn to table me. Just hardcore. Um, so scores wise, that means that Lucas is going to end up getting, in, uh, he ends up getting a four. Yeah, because I'll be on one, two, three, and I'll kill him off that. So he'll just hold these two for four. Mm -hmm. And then tertiary, or you, you will again get a zero because I'll be on your objective. And then uh, last turn of the game, uh, I've got you at an eight and then a two. Uh, the biggest and the best, uh, he'll grab a four on yep. uh, just by standing on this objective for the rest of the game. It's done. Uh, he'll get his last two interrogates. Meanwhile, uh, I'm again getting a zero or an next turn after he kills all my stuff. And at the end of the game, we sussed out that uh, my bike's running uh, up here eventually would be able to grab uh, an eight on primary at the bottom of five. Yep. Uh, and uh, still no tertiary because Lucas will still have models on my objectives. Brood Swarm uh, goes very well. That turn when I drop in again, I've still got a ton of dudes. So I'm grabbing another five and then a four. So that'll get me my full 15 there. Uh, R&D, easy peasy. Boom, boom, boom. Draw up to get, uh, uh, yeah, I think in the last turn I had to have the, I would have had to have the neophytes do it, but that was done. And assassinate wise, I'll end up killing uh, the, uh, the the bike boss. I think mm -hmm. drove down and got, yep. got hit by a demo charge for three. And then the kill rig for three. Um, I think you might be looking at the wrong game, my dude. I think your brood storm is two, one, and one, right? My oh no I'm not sorry this is the game that was played. no 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 I'm I'm looking at your biggest oh, and the score. best uh sorry so yeah that was a two five yeah, two, one, two one. that makes so much more sense two one and one and then assassinate uh I've got a you six got my three, three rigs you got my weird boy and you got my bike boss yeah I got the last rig at the end of the day hey, um so oh, uh, final final score then and ends up being uh primary is gonna be forty for Lucas versus ten for me secondary is going to end up being uh, 39, 39 for Lucas, 38 So a close secondary for myself. Game. Very close secondary. It all comes down to that primary stuff. Yeah. And then uh, the final final uh, is going to be 89 points it's for Lucas. Love us, Lucas, versus uh, 58 points uh, for the boys with extra limbs. Yeah. What do you What do you think overall? What do you think of this matchup? Uh, it's fun. I think we should play it again. Um, on a different mission with you going first because I want to I want to see what that's like definitely yeah so as we can see we both score secondaries real well yes um, so the game ends up becoming about primary and we both deny primary real well at the end of the day yes um, 
But uh, yeah, going first on Data Scry worked out very well, and I was not able to capitalize back. So, good game, my good brother. Game, dude. Looking forward to some more of them, yeah. Yeah. Um, hope you guys enjoyed uh, the first of our bit wraps. I think we're going to be making some more of these um, oh, yeah. soon now that we have a, a regular setup, place to film. We're mm -hmm. also going to be working on some tech issues, getting some more lights set up. Um, also playing on different train setups as well. Yeah, definitely. Gonna, you guys are going to be seeing some WTC games. You'll be seeing some player place games. Um, we'll definitely try some GW games at some point. Yes, certainly. That'll be good stuff. Especially, and I think Ryan now has UKTC train. We have a UKTC table. That's yes. awesome. So if yeah. we can borrow that from him, we can hotly, be able to do that. hotly requested. Um, but yeah, so thank, thank you all uh, so much for uh, for tuning in. If you want to uh, get more of us, talk to us uh, directly. Check us out on Patreon and whatnot. And make sure to listen to the uh, listen to the show. Listen to the show. Best in faction, the next generation. We're going to Slanashmas next weekend. It's going to be awesome. This is it probably already happened by the time this bear out comes out. But if you want to hear a whole lot more about GSC, I'm taking it to that event. There's going to be a lot of good stuff there. Lucas is not taking orcs because he's a coward. That's um, true. But at some point, if you want to hear about his chaos night ventures, check out that episode yeah, as well. Shooting army, baby. Let's go. All right. That'll be said. Thanks for tuning in. Catch you next time. Bye, guys. <laughs>